So Doom Patrolers, when I say that this video is the biggest Doom Patrol Season 2 video I've done, I say that with no exaggeration because trust me, if you're a diehard fan of this show, you're going to want to stick from this uh, video from the beginning until the end because there are so much juicy details to go over and I haven't felt this ecstatic about talking about something like a show in a video in a long, long time because some of these details are absolutely incredible. So in today's video, guys, I'm going to be going over absolutely everything. Some things that we know that we get a lot more emphasis on, what season two is like for certain characters and what's in store for them, and just many other details such as new characters and even Dorothy Spinner and just trust me, more, more, more and more and more. So I just want to give a shout out to the Doom Patrol updates page. Uh, they've got some photos taken from the SFX magazine, so a huge shout out to that as well. I might be showing some of those photos in this video uh, but they also replied sfx magazine themselves on where you guys can actually read all of this yourself i'm not going to be directly quoting from the magazine i mean i've done a lot of cliff notes of the juicy little details that i want to go over and uh, expand my thoughts on it and stuff like that but if you want to read all of this yourself i'm probably showing something on that twitter page right now where you can actually get an actual peek at this yourself whether that's digitally or ordering it uh, in a physical copy so trust me guys i'm not going to drag out this intro much further but aside from getting a Doom Patrol trailer for when it comes out June 25th, this is the next biggest thing, I think, trust me at least, uh, that, that we've got ever. And, and I'd really love for you guys to share this video, leave a like on it, show your excitement. And I'm thinking of maybe timestamping certain parts in the comments down below, but at the same time, if you are a Doom Patrol fan, you're going to just want to stick around for all of this because you'll lap every part of it up. So let's begin with this video. And we have learned that it picks up a few weeks after the finale, so the Doom Patrol have been in that miniature size of around a couple of inches, give or take, for quite some time. Now Jeremy Carver, who is the showrunner of course, amazing man who's brought the the construction of this show to such amazing fruition has teased that there's actually a metaphor behind the shrunk size of the Doom Patrol and this even ties in with the introduction of Dorothy Spinner and that's about what do we want to be when we grow up so therein with all of these details we're discussing in this video which I'll get to with Rita growing and other characters that is quite a theme in season two considering there is now a child in Doom Manor which will also cause the characters of the Doom Patrol to look inside themselves and even reflect on their own childhood and even their past with their parents. Now, I'm really looking forward to this just for many different reasons, but also just because Doom Patrol in Season 1 has already briefly teased stuff like this, so I just like how Jeremy Carver has almost taken a look back at Season 1 and has thought about what works. For a specific example, the first thing I can think of from the top of my head, if you guys remember, we got a flashback from Larry when he was a kid. I think he was pretending to run around and play pilot, and his parents were even arguing about his sexuality. Uh, so gonna, there's going to be a lot of diving into stuff like that for each of the Doom Patrol members and even a look at themselves as parents so I'm hoping for some more cliff scenes in relation to his daughter where things left off last season for example with him returning that watch to her but not actually saying to her that he's still alive but how is the magnificent Rita Farr dealing with the circumstances that the Doom Patrol were left off in as of last season? Well considering the end of season one they're all in miniature size and we all know what Rita Farr is like uh, in certain situations she feels like everything is melting down and she's out of control so she is feeling helpless. But April Bowlby says that she takes it as an opportunity to the point of where she could even use more of her powers. And she even approaches Cyborg to guide her in that. Now as for Cyborg, we, we know quite a bit about where he is at in this universe, in his kind of career if you will. He's not quite at the stage of his career where he's in the Justice League, but he's actually quite known amongst your typical normie walking in the street. So he's had quite a bit of heroic dealings well before even running into the Doom Patrol. So yeah, I, I really like the idea of him guiding Rita and exploring her powers and April even teases that she steps more into leadership and believe it or not tries to become uh, more of a superhero if you will but you know this is the Doom Patrol we have a dysfunctional family of misfits here so it's, they're not exactly going to be the new Justice League or anything like that if some of you are getting excited by that particular word. April Bowlby has also dived into a bit more of what we can expect from Rita in how she describes season two in such a way and where it's about the characters we have come to love looking in on themselves and coming to terms with the trauma that they have experienced in their past and we most certainly know each and every member of the doom patrol have had so much of that as i kind of teased earlier whether that's from their childhood or, or some form or another or along the way like larry when he was experimented on there's just there's a lot of baggage there and that's what makes this show so interesting and how i've reiterated again and again and again over time it contains some of the best if not the best character development i've ever seen 
seen on a show because every single character's trauma is so unique and in-depth that it follows them in multiple ways and kind of bleeds into the show over the course of the season that just makes the audience empathize with them, connect with them, and every word under the sun with them. Um, and, and I, well, once again, guys, I love it and I can't wait for more uh, reflections and stories like this. Now, for Rita in particular, we did see last season a very young Rita with her parents bringing her into the world of acting. Now, in this season with her, it's about her relationship with her parents, specifically her mother, diving into that and how she can heal from it and even make something good out of it. But before we get into all of those juicy details on the villains, and trust me, there are more characters revealed in details than what I thought we would get until a trailer or even shown in a trailer. Trailer, and then Dorothy Spinner details, we can't forget that some of our loved characters view Niles Calder as almost or practically a villain now. How are things going to pick up with that, considering what Niles has done to each and every one of them in the past is borderline unforgivable. And we've speculated a lot about that on this channel in the past, just how each of them are going to move forward because it is, it's very inconceivable. So Jeremy Carver explains here that for a few characters in the Doom Patrol, it, it was definitely the straw that broke the camel's back. And for those characters in particular, that they, they can't stand the Chief. Whereas for others, despite him having involvement in the catalyst that ruin their lives, that they can still lean on Niles Calder for support. There's definitely going to be a variety of responses to that shocking news that Doom Patrol learned about their leader last season that will bleed throughout the rest of season two. But for those of you who've been wanting to learn about the villains, which I'm sure is all of you and what can be in store for them in season two, well, well you're going to want to stick around for this. I mean, at least it makes me insanely excited because we know how wacky and crazy uh, this, this can get in the show from previous uh, characters in the last season. And it's just going to, trust me, amp up up even further in season two and go very much so comic book accurate uh, straight out of the uh, comic book pages. So as for the teasers of some of the villains, we, we've been over some of them before on this channel such as Dr. Time and where I'll probably leave a link to that video with my character breakdown if you have absolutely no idea who these characters are. But April Bowlby does give us some new hints with Dr. Time such as how it was this insane experience. And in this adaptation of the character, Dr. Time is a 70s themed roller skating man and that the Doom Patrol need to steal something from him and there's time travel involved so yeah doom patrol time travel this sounds like a recipe for disaster yet success for an episode now as for mr nobody i have detailed this before this may or may not be new to some of you but he is remaining trapped in the painting for the duration of season two and alan trudick will not be reprising his role unless he's done some voiceover work or something like that but i believe he said to himself that he's just assume he's not going to be in season two but jeremy carver does detail some things that we already know and how red jack will also be appearing as he feeds off the pain of others and he went on to tease the shadowy mr evans is also coming in the show as well as the sex men and of course something you've all known since Dorothy entered the show or at least the comic book fans you know just a little bit more about Doom Patrol that means the candle maker. However I haven't been over shadowy Mr. Evans before or the sex men so I'm going to do a very quick little breakdown as to who those guys are before we get onto the next bunch of news and yeah trust me you're going to want us to around for this because it's weird and wacky and very up the Doom Patrol or should I say Danny the street does that work? No. So shadowy Miss Evans comes from another dimension. You could say he's like an interdimensionally kind of villain or person in where he actually resides in the Library of Dust. Now, he likes to view himself as a bringer of knowledge and as per a lot of wacky villains on the Doom Patrol run, he's got a very strange perspective and outlook on things to the point in where I believe he has this kind of torture chamber in the Library of Dust in where uh, he, he kind of extracts these apologies out of people for who uh, kind of uh, refuse his wisdom uh, and even uh, take the mick out of his singing. Now, he has a bunch of various powers ranging from reality manipulation, flight, uh, or even the ability to affect people's minds to the point of unleashing repressed, lustful desires. And uh, you can imagine what that means. Think uh, one of the final episodes in where Flex Mantello may or may not have caused everyone on Danny the Street to... Uh, yeah. The shadowy Mr. Evans does tie into those other characters that Jeremy Carver teased, and that is the Sex Men. Now, who are the Sex Men? Now, we've seen some organizations or kind of little uh, teams from the government government before, or kind of black site government things going on in Doom Patrol. Now, this is a whole new level, or, well, for some of you, may actually not be a whole new level considering Doom Patrol. So, the Sex Men have actually tried to stop shadowy Mr. Evans, and as I said, if you're wondering who they are, they are literally a team of government soldiers, if you will, or operatives from a specific unit from the Pentagon who kind of deal with paranormal sexual situations 
Yeah. So you can imagine how this might fit into season two with the arrival of shadowy Mr. Evans and shadowy Mr. Evans even ties into the candle maker in where he actually revealed once that he was the sign of an impending crisis, which was the arrival of uh, the shadow, uh, sorry, the candle maker, not the shadow maker. But yeah, the candle maker is like a whole new thing for another video. I'll leave a description for that in the comments, but I will dive into them a bit more in this video. But I'm sure if you know Dorothy Spinner, you know who the candle maker is. So considering all of these characters are coming, and as teased by Jeremy Carver, I'm thinking now adapt that storyline potentially of where so a lot of people may have their inner desires, lustful desires released. I mean, I don't know. Who knows how they're going to adapt it, but considering the sex men are involved and so on and so forth, uh, we, may, we may be getting something like that in, in, in a similar vein at least. Now, finally for the video, Dorothy Spinner. And we have quite a bit to go over because she's like the main wild card of season two and, and, and that's something I'm really looking forward to just because of the nature of the character adds so many interesting factors into this season. Uh, so if you don't know about her at all, as I said, I've got that link in the description, but... I mean, there will be quite a bit of information revealed in this part. But long story short, she she isn't uh, the chief's daughter in the comics, but they definitely are very, very, very true to the character in the show in terms of her powers. And this can mean some serious, serious damage for the Doom Patrol to deal with in season two. Now, you, th you may be thinking, what can a, an 11-year-old girl, I mean, physically uh, and mentally even to a degree, do that could possibly cause such a threat to the Doom Patrol and even the world? Well, Jeremy Carver gives us a whole bunch of stuff like that. So to begin with, he explains that she's been alive for over 100 years, of which we already know, considering the chief met her mother in those flashbacks in around 1913, I believe it was. I mean, he was with her for a couple of years before he went back into the world of men, and he's been protecting that secret ever since, but she's been actually artificially kept alive at the age of 11. Now he goes on to explain that in season two, Dorothy is kind of like a lot of other children who haven't had the opportunity to see their parents for one reason or another, and in particular, her father father obviously so she wants to please Niles and one way of doing that is to control the impulses that she has considering that she can bring anything to life that she imagines in her mind. Now obviously Niles doesn't really want that to happen especially considering the imagination of a child. I mean for example there the perfect way to put it is what if you were to upset your kid who has this ability and they wanted to destroy the world or, or do something to hurt you. They could bring something alive, anything alive to do that. So if they wanted to destroy the world for example, Dorothy could quite literally bring to fruition something that has the capability of destroying the planet. So yeah, I think you're starting to understand how, how <laughs> this season's gonna go. And I think we can all guess, even though the initial episodes will likely show Dorothy's control with teases here and there of minor imaginary thoughts and friends coming to fruition in reality, I think it's surely inevitable that she's gonna get upset about something at some point and it's gonna become such a huge threat. But we also get some teases from Abigail Shapiro who is playing Dorothy Spinner herself. Now she goes on to explain that Dorothy already has this kind of circle of imaginary friends. Some are good and and some are, well, uh, not, not so good. And because of that, as we've already been over, she can already be a huge threat. And this goes all the way back as to while Niles Calder kept her hidden away on Danny the Street for such a long time. One of those imaginary friends that was teased by Abigail was Darling Come Home. Now in the comics, she and her family played with Dorothy and told her stories and even taught her to read and write. Now I don't really want to go too in detail to that just in case uh, the show, and I'm, I'm sure they will in some vein or another, bring this to life in the, in the storyline. And as for the other characters, uh, Abigail wanted to kind of keep them a surprise, but she did feel that most of them would be done in CGI. And and also, it just that, that makes perfect sense because imagine a kid imagining imaginary friends. They, they might be weird, distorted. I, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. But what does Niles Calder think of Dorothy and this ability she has to bring characters and imaginary friends to life? Well, he is absolutely fearful of it. And that is because she has no full control over her powers. Now, since a lot of her creations come to fruition, due to her emotions, the character's creation usually stems from if she's very happy or very sad. Now, as I teased earlier, you can only imagine what could come about if she's sad. And for example, since we know we're getting Candlemaker, like that's another character who could completely take advantage of a young Dorothy by granting her certain wishes. But as I said earlier, that's a whole story for another video, which I will leave linked in the description. But also, I think the final thing in terms of Dorothy that we can talk about today is something that I I've been wondering about for a long time and that is actually how she will look and it does indeed turn out that is exactly what they're doing in the show with prosthetics to the point of where Abigail Shapiro has been sat in the makeup chair 
uh, having prosthetics applied to her face for two hours. Initially, it was actually even longer than that. They're, they're going full out uh, Dorothy Spinner design from the comics. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I lo what I love about Doom Patrol, or just DC Universe shows in general, is their, their production is amazing, but also their department for making practical and, uh, you know, prosthetic effects and everything like that is just is remarkable. I'm really happy to know that uh, they didn't have to do that. They could have just been like, ah, we're not going to adapt that from the comics, but, but they're doing it. And it makes sense as well, because back in last season, uh, when we met the primitive uh, lady, no, uh, her mother, y Yueha, I think it was. I can't remember the name. She she had that look as well. So, But that is the gist of this video, guys. There was a bunch of information in there. But as I said, if you want to get every nook and cranny and, and direct word from Jeremy Carver, April Bowlby, Abigail Shapiro, uh, what things mean for certain characters in a little bit more depth, read the SFX magazine, the latest issue. I believe it is the June one. You've got, you've got Wonder Woman on the front cover. Yet again, shout out to Doom Patrol updates on Twitter for the photos uh, that, you know, SFX, as I said, uh, check the replies. That's where they reply to those photos in where you can get the magazine issue yourself. But suffice to say, guys, I am absolutely buzzing for this season. I mean, I knew it was going in this direction, but just hearing all of this detail, uh, some new villains, the wacky adventures they're going to get uh, up to in season two. I think you can obviously tell the energy that I'm pouring through this camera lens right now. Oh man, my favorite show is coming back June 25th. We have got a lot to look forward to, but you know, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below guys because I would, I'm dying to hear it. If you enjoyed this video and the effort I put in to compile this information together and uh, with my own thoughts and twists and stuff like that, I, I would really appreciate a like. There are other ways to support me as well with the join button where you can get a channel membership. Also Patreon links down in the description below. But thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and weekend even. Uh, and I'll see you Doom Patrollers in the next video. Goodbye.